Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining everyone. Uh, welcome to the Technology Behind the CI60 Series webinar. Today we'll be talking about the rock solid technology behind the CI60 Series and the difference between the different models. Presented today is uh, Felix Schmolgruber, an application manager at XRI Penton. I'm Netta Goldfriend, Regional Marketing Specialist for EMEA, and I will be moderating today's webinar. Uh, just a few things to go over before we start. Uh, due to the number of people that are attending today's webinar, we will keep everyone muted. If you have questions, please use the question function on the GoToWebinar panel. We will have time to answer some questions at the end of the presentation. Um, and finally, this webinar will be recorded and you will receive a link so that you can review the webinar at your convenience. I will now turn it over to Felix. Felix. Good morning, America. Good afternoon, Europe. Good evening, Asia. My name is Felix. Thank you for joining. And I will start. So, XRite's portable CI60 series of instruments are handheld instruments, and they offer mostly a great flexibility when it comes to measuring large or heavy or moving objects which make, uh, make such instruments the choice for production environments, right? So uh, handhelds are preferred whenever I cannot move the object in front of a benchtop instrument, which is the alternative to a handheld uh, we have in our portfolio. But quite often <clears throat> they're used in quite busy environments such as production environments where tools could fall off um, the tables or, um, uh, and those tools could be the spectrophotometer. And of course, if uh, such a spectrophotometer does not sustain a drop, uh, you might have a production downtime because in many instances, um, uh, the use of an instrument is really critical to uh, controlling your production when you are adjusting colored material or product. Um, and uh, when an instrument uh, would already break uh, just by being dropped from a table um, uh, and needs to be sent in for repair due to that, then of course you would have uh, the trouble to um, uh, send it back for repair. And then um, this might mean that you at least have a downtime of a couple of days before you can receive a loaner instrument. And uh, we simply want you to not have this scenario and uh, probably always have good uptime so that you need service only as a pre-scheduled event for the annual uh, recertification of the instrument. Now, um, the x rite CI60 series instruments are the most robust handheld spectrophotometers in the market and won't fail just for a table drop and here is why. Typically, color measurement instruments are using um, to measure an object, a lamp. There is different measurement geometries uh, for that. The lamp is uh, illuminating onto the object and the object is reflecting its color. And then it goes into an optical system, for example, with fiber optics into a slit to be really separating the light, the light nicely and then into a holographic grating or prism. I'm symbolizing this with a prism now. And from there, the prism actually spreads the reflected light into all the rainbow colors. And those will then be tracked on a diode area, which is typically a camera, like a camera uh, nowadays. And from that you get for an orange color, a typical orange spectral curve. And an orange spectral curve looks like this. It absorbs all the light um in the sorry it absorbs all the light in the short wavelength and it reflects typically the yellow orange and red light components which is why an orange spectral curve is such a step curve and this curve is then calculated into the lab values uh which many of you might be using to make color assessments right the problem with this system is that it is an optical bench. So all these components need to be fixed, aligned on an optical bench or in an optical system, because if the light entry is uh, just slightly shifting over here, I'm getting immediately a, a, a dismapping of the reflection or of the projection of the rainbow colors onto this diode area, and I'm getting immediately a shift in the measurement and my measurement will be ruined. So such instruments, are kind of uh, 
fragile. The benefit is, of course, that those instruments can measure at the speed of light. You simply need only a, a flash of light, like with a camera picture you take, because the whole system, the whole uh, light travels through this system at the speed of light, and you have um, your intensities captured on the diode area, and you have your curves, uh, your curve mapped. So you have a very short measurement time on the one hand, but you have this fragility or this uh, sensitivity to shock um, uh, and to misalignment of this optical bench system. In the retrospective, of course, uh, for a tabletop or benchtop instrument, like we call it, this is the preferred technology because of the short measurement time and because of the fact also that these optical components can be mechanically aligned. So you can adjust an instrument to measure more closely to the next instrument of the same type, right? Now, the x ray handheld instruments have a different technology to do this light diffraction uh, into the rainbow colors. And that is called the dynamic rotational sampling technology, which is using a filter wheel. So here is the system. We have, again, our object to be measured. We have a light source. In this instance, now it's a slightly different geometry. Reflection of the object going into optics. And now we have a filter wheel, and that filter wheel has 31 distinct narrow band interference filters. That's a high technology um, coating uh, uh, on glass, metal, uh, vaporized metal on glass. Um, and these filters really only have uh, one distinct wavelength passing through. And then we have a photo detector, um, which simply picks a signal for every single filter. So for this to be possible, we need to spin that filter wheel as you can see on screen now. And then we get our spectral curves just as with the other system. Um, but now we get it in a sequential fashion because the filter wheel needs to spin in order to pass the light through every single filter glass at least once. So the benefit of this technology is it's really rock solid because it doesn't really matter whether the light passes centrally through the filter or slightly off. This is such a, a, a solid optical system that this is very, very shock resistant. And that's simply caused by the history of our company founder, who used to be an engineer with NASA. And uh, whenever they do something for space use, uh, the focus is always to make it lightweight, um, as small as possible and as rock solid as possible. And this was kind of the thinking behind uh, this concept, which is uh, in x ray instruments for many, many years. The little downside of this technology, of course, is you need a permanent illumination because that filter wheel needs to spin in order to pick the measurement. So you have a slightly higher measurement time, um, which is in comparison to, uh, you know, fractions of a second with a flash lamp, it is one second. But the overall processing time of uh, any instrument usually is two seconds also for those instruments which use the other technology. So here you have a comparison of these two technical components. On the, right, on the left side, you see such a, a narrow band interference filter wheel with 31 filters. So it has a 10 nanometer resolution from 400 to 700 nanometers. And on the other side, you see a picture of uh, so-called holographic gratings. These are kind of uh, rainbow mirrors, I always uh, call them. These are used uh, in the system, which I symbolized with the prism in the first slide. So here's the comparison of benefits. And you see our CI 7600 benchtop instrument, for example. This is using a spectral analyzer with a grating and a, a scene on the flash lamp. And that's best in laboratory environment. You have with the flash lamp a possible UV control, and you have, of course, a slightly shorter measurement time, but more or less the same cycle time compared to the handheld. And the DRS system, the dynamic rotational sampling system of the CI60 series, is um, a robust construction. Um, the instrument really sustains shocks or drops uh, without losing its precision. And therefore, it is best in production environment, which uh, makes this simply the largest installed base of a handheld instrument you will find in the market. We did win a lot of business over our competitors um, over the decades with already uh, multiple um, uh, generations of uh, instruments using um, the uh, similar technology. 
Um, and uh, we still are very successful with the handhelds for exactly that reason, because the production environments prefer um, uh, rock solid instruments in order to prevent failure or production downtime. Now, the other benefits of the CI60 series are really that it can be used even in a lab, of course, or in uh, a plant or factory or in the field. It works with all types of products. Um, so it's really flexible uh, because of his me it is me a measurement geometry, which is a so-called diffuse 8 degree or sphere geometry. Then, of course, um, you have uh, a full connected audit trail data reporting if you use it along with our IQC software. Um, but of course, you can also create and share standards um, with the instrument itself. And uh, now we, of course, uh, since this is the latest generation, we have a modern battery and lamp technology inside the instrument and the uh, easy to use interface, as, a, as well as uh, we ship, um, uh, except for the CI60 with all other models, we also ship the, no, actually we ship the configuration tool with all the models, which is a big benefit because you can back up your data before sending an instrument uh, in for service and then uh, um, restore the data after you receive the instrument back. Um, here you have some impressions on accessories and the overall look and feel of the inter interface. You either can have a very simple pass-fail indication or very detailed data and uh, spectral curves or LED plots if you like that. Um, and uh, the instrument can be equipped with a measurement routine or a job. So you see here on the central image that we can also download a picture to the instrument, which shows to the user exactly where um, the operator should measure. So that really minimizes error and makes sure you measure the right thing. And finally, here is the overview of available models. You can see there is quite some models over time, which we offer now. Basically, the entry level is a CI60, which uh, comes with an 8 millimeter spot. Um, excuse me for not having the tick mark there. Um, it comes with a 0.10 repeatability and a 0.40 inter-instrument agreement, and there is no Bluetooth option available for this instrument. A CI62 can have uh, a choice of either 4 or 8 millimeter measurement spot. And the 62L also then is the separate instrument uh, model name for the 14 millimeter large spot. A CI64 comes with a dual spot option. So here you really have both measurement approaches and can switch between eight and four millimeters where the L model is then again, the separate 14 millimeter spot. The difference between 64 and 62 is mainly performance. So white repeatability and inter-instrument agreement. And then we have the top range model is the CI64 UV, where you also can control uh, the UV component of the light, where as this instrument has an extra UV uh, component to the light source. And this is used to measure optical brightness or uh, optical brightness or fluorescent material, um, uh, like uh, highly used in textiles or papers. Uh, when it comes to uh, make things look whiter than they actually are. So in summary, we believe that we have uh, over 30 years of uh, proven innovation and experience with such products. Um, I think we are really known for our portable spectrophotometers um, with this dynamic rotational sampling te technology. And uh, we believe that, it, that this is also the main reason why we have the largest installed base um, of handheld instruments, uh, spectrophotometers, color measurement instruments in the world. So this is it, short and sweet. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm open for any questions. Rick, thank you, Felix. Okay, if you have questions uh, that you would like to submit to Felix, you can submit them now. In the meantime, I'm going to pop up another poll question no. Um, if anyone uh, wants to take while we wait for questions to arrive. So we'll give it a few seconds.
Okay, is it like people need to think about the poll question that much? <laughs> if they don't ask their question yet. Yes. We will, yeah, we will close it now. Okay, so first question that we have here um, is, uh, so how many measurements can be taken with the CI6 versus the legacy generation SP6? Uh, that's a good question. Um, basically, the CI6X um, uses um, a, a microcomputer inside the instrument, which allows us also to use uh, advanced electronics to uh, control the lamp stability. And that overall allowed us to actually drop the voltage of the lamp, because we're still using a tungsten halogen lamp in the CI6X series, to a substantially lower level. I think the, it's, uh, it's really like a, a third, if not half the voltage and, and, and the energy level on the lamp, which has two benefits. A, we don't consume as much battery, and B, uh, we get a more stable reading because it's really microprocessor controlled uh, on what the lamp quality is, and we get an additional reference signal. So overall, uh, I think the specification says an SP6X, so the pre previous generation uh, was able to do around 1,000 readings per charge. If you really had a well and healthy battery, and the new instrument is actually doing a factor three of that, as far as I'm aware, because we also have a we have a, a lithium-ion battery pack, which is also used in a camcorder. So that's a commercially available battery pack versus the old generation had a custom x ray battery pack, which was based on uh, an IMH uh, technology, which of course is much uh, a worse technology in comparison to lithium ion. I hope this answers the question. Okay. Um, another question we have is for, for spot colors printed on paper, does CA60 series have the same LAB readings as the exact? No. Well, it depends really on what your paper gloss and surface condition is. Basically, an exact is a 45-0 instrument and therefore has uh, mostly different readings comparison in comparison to spherical readings. So a spherical reading means we have here a, a diffuse illumination and an 8-degree pickup, and with the exact we have a 45-degree illumination and a 0-degree pickup or a perpendicular pickup. If your gloss level uh, is, uh, well, basically you always have a different reading. In, in this instrument, you have two choices, a specular component included and excluded. And the excluded readings might be close to the exact, but normally they are still slightly different in terms of absolute readings. That's simply a measurement geometry uh, background, which causes the different readings. Um, I, th I believe we will have we have time for for two more questions. Uh, we have a question here. What is the benefit of changing the measurement size from four millimeters, eight, and fourteen? Is it for measuring different types of surfaces? Uh, thanks for the question. That's an excellent question. Yes, absolutely. the The rule of the rule in the general rule for color measurement always is. The larger your measurement spot, the more precise and stable is your measurement. Um, and you have to think of different surfaces, uh, like leather surfaces or structured surfaces, surfaces like uh, like facade plaster or uh, you know automotive interiors, where um, you could run into the risk that you have a high variation from reading to reading if you slightly move the aperture from one spot to the next, simply caused by the, the rough structure you are trying to measure. If I can measure this instead of four millimeter with a diameter of 16 millimeters, that's a factor four in terms of diameter, but it's a factor um, uh, four exponential two. So that's a factor of 32 in terms of area coverage. So you measure 32 times the area and that simply makes a way more homogeneous and stable reading. So the general rule is you should measure with the largest possible aperture you can get. 
But of course, the reality is if I want to measure a, a ballpoint, a pen, or um, you know, a tube, or uh, a small object, or an object with a, with a high curvature, I might not have the opportunity to measure with such a large aperture. And then, of course, I need to have the flexibility to go down in aperture size, which is why we offer these different options. Uh, now the final final question, and we will um, we will get back to to everyone. All the the questions that are submitted uh, will be answered. Um, so uh, we have another question here. Uh, can we get whiteness values in the CI60? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can get the CIE whiteness value, and you can get the uh, on the CI. Uh, 64 UV, I think we even have ganz grisa whiteness. So there is different whiteness standards which are supported in the instrument. I would need to look up the details. So if you want to know it exactly, then I'm happy to answer this in writing. But there's basically this, the, the common choices for whiteness indexes, indices are available in the instrument. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Felix. So uh, that was the last question we we have time for this uh, short and sweet uh, webinar. Um, again, we will follow up if we didn't get to your questions. Also, you will receive an email with a link to the recording of this webinar. So this is uh, this marks the end of our webinar for today. Uh, thank you for joining and have a great day. Likewise, thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye bye.